Good morning. We're down at the Drunken Parrot Brewery in my basement, and we're going to brew a batch of dry stout today. Had a lot of requests to kind of walk people through on how it actually works, so I'll be doing a kind of a step-by-step walkthrough. Right now we uh, are just getting ready to fill the kettles, and I have uh, two 20-gallon reverse osmosis backup tanks. They're pressurized. Uh, I have the recipe inputted into Beersmith and then imported into the brewery controller. So all I have to do is hit the go and we can start. So here we are at the brewery controller just getting ready to uh, start filling the hot liquor tank. That opens the valve <coughs> and starts filling. I already have all my water salts in the bottom. We'll give those a stir as it fills and we'll, we'll just wait till it gets full here. There's a uh, pressure sensor right down here. And that's going to tell the controller when to stop uh, with the water for the brew day. Looks like we're going to need right around, uh, right around 11 gallons. But with my system being a 20 gallon system, I'm actually going to fill it to about 17 gallons to do this 5 gallon batch. Um, otherwise my Herms coil won't be won't be underwater when I'm trying to mash. So uh, I'll just uh, pour the excess water off before it goes before I do my spark. Alright, we're back now. We got water in the hot liquor tank. We have the uh, the stir motor for the hot liquor tank attached. And we're just heating up our strike water right now. We're gonna do a uh, a rest at uh, 120 and then we're going to go to 150 and then a mash out of 168. So right now we're just uh, just waiting for the water to heat. I get about 9 to 11 degrees of rise per minute. The water's at uh, 64 degrees right now. We need to get to about 132 for a strike and uh, that should take about uh, just about probably 10 minutes or so, maybe 15 and we'll be back. So here we are, we have the strike water at temp. Um, everything's kind of on hold until I tell it what to do. Now's a good time to show you what we got going on in the mash tun. I have a custom uh, full screen mesh. Uh, I had bad luck with the Blickman getting stuck mashes and whatnot. I have some uh, adjustable lock line here that allows me to maneuver and do kind of whatever I need to do to maneuver that and sprinkle the wart back on top from the herm. Uh, I also have a pressure sensor here, just like in the boil kettle. Uh, I add my water first, then I add my grain. Uh, when I wa add my water, if I add my grain first, what will happen is it will mess up the pressure sensor readings and it will get off. So I'm going to just start adding water here right now. It's just a simple uh, dial. And I just say that, and it's going to start moving water. So I'm going to get all the water in there, I'll add some grain, and we'll be mashing. Alright, we got the grains added. We're just getting ready to start our first rest here. I'm going to turn the ball valve, we'll get all our grains stirred in. We should start to see the ball valve go black. That's that. We're going to let that sit for 20 minutes and then it's going to start auto going through the steps. We're going to go 130, 
168. All right, we're back. We're just getting ready to do a uh, switch over to uh, go to our 150 rest, and you should be able to start here in valves. So now it's going into heat mode to ramp that temperature up to uh, 150. We were at 120. Um, I usually see about about five degrees or so a minute with the Hermes coil. Uh, we're already at 126 right now. I'll pop the lid so you can kind of see see our sprinkle of, of wart back on the top right there. Uh, with the ball valve at maybe a quarter or so. The pump I have is a little giant and it's really, really, really powerful compared to a Mars pump. So, not really hands on. Um, we'll let it ramp up to the 150 uh, rest where it'll sit for 60 minutes. Then it will, uh, then we'll do a mash out and I'll come back on the mash out. There's really nothing to see. Maybe just the, uh, the sight glass getting a little darker as the temperatures ramp up but uh, I'll come back shortly. While we're here mashing, I just wanted to take a minute and actually kind of describe how the system works. So, <clears throat> when mashing and using the Herm system, basically on the left in the hot liquor tank, you have a uh, body of water with a coil, basically a reverse immersion coil, in it. The elements are in there, also and uh, so what happens is in heat mode what will happen is it will come out the bottom here it will go down through the pump up through the pump into the entrance of the Herms coil spin around go through there come out go back down to the pump and then come back up the top here now when in heat mode that's what's happening. It's it's using the exact opposite process of when you're trying to cool down wort, and it uses the the coil submerged in the water to heat up and drop it back on the mash. With my system, I actually have two different loops. We'll call that loop one. Loop two is just a recirculation from the bottom down to the pump, right out to the top. So how the system works, it has two sensors here and it averages those temperatures. On the fly, what will happen is if the temperature is low, the valve profile one goes through the terms and back out and heats. When at temperature, it will actually just recirculate amongst itself. That way you don't have to worry about overshoots and stuff like that. It keeps a, a very even constant temperature. So, and I'm sure you can hear the valve profile is actually switching right now. It has a, a 0.5 degree hysteria, so basically the temperature is within 0.5 degrees the entire time. So it's, it's constantly clicking those valves open and close to either divert or to uh, recirculate amongst itself. Well, once again, I'm back here. We got uh, a couple seconds left. I don't know if you can see that or not. We got a couple seconds left. Uh, we're going to mash out right now. Uh, just going to 168. <clears throat> Once again, there's not much really going on. I mean, I can show you under here. Uh, just uh, some more returning. Um, yeah, it's not really. Mashing is uh, pretty hands off. Uh, in fact, I've been uploading the videos to YouTube for the last hour. And uh, I'm just going to let it do this for about 10 minutes. Then uh, we'll be back. Alright, so we're at the end of mash out here. Got my lock line moved up. And I'm going to start the, uh, the sparge. So I, I basically I need to sparge with, uh, looks like right around 6 gallons of water. So. I'm going to add six gallons, then I'm actually going to have roughly four gallons left over, so I'll just dump that right into the drain, right down here. 
So uh, what I do for that, so sparge is on now. It's basically taking the water from the hot liquor tank and gonna go through here, clean the lines, clean the hot the herms lines, and uh, I'm gonna add the water. This should start clearing up here. It's pulling the fresh water from the uh, the hot liquor tank. Like I said, I'm gonna add six, dump the rest, and then we'll be back. All right, we're back again here. I'm just uh, doing a recirculation. We have uh, all the water out of the uh, hot liquor tank slash uh, kettle. And due to the uh, the hybrid, my hybrid system, so basically what I have to do is, since I only have one sparge, I have to uh, do this recirculation and uh, add all my water at once because I don't have three vessels. So what happens is uh, I do this, I'll recirculate for 10 minutes, the whole mixture should be uh, pretty much the same, and then I'll dump it right over into the boil kettle and we'll start boiling. I dump the extra four gallons out down through the hose um, just because I'm doing a five gallon batch. When I do a 10 gallon batch or, or anything more than that, I basically start with the proper exact volumes and so I, ha I don't have to dump any out. But uh, yeah, so we'll let this recirculate for a little bit here and uh, I'll actually push this down into here just like so and we'll let it go for a little bit and then we'll be back when we start sparging into the kettle. Alright, we're back now. We're going to start uh, sparging into the kettle. So we'll just sparge everything over and uh, that'll be about it. And we'll start the boil. Alright, here we are. We're sparged into the kettle. Mash tun is just grains now. How I clean this out is I take a little bucket, scoop all the grain out, and then come back with a, a small shot back, suck that out, and then it's all clean. And we're back here. We have uh, <coughs> about two ounces of hops to add once we get to a boil for 60 minutes. And uh, looks like uh, we're at about 185 degrees here. So we should be at a boil very, very shortly.